We're going to look at writing formulas in Excel. Now, if you want to use Excel to write formulas, the first thing you have to understand is relative versus absolute addressing. So if you're not familiar with that, watch the video on that first. In this one, we're going to look at using a built-in function and giving names to our cells to make our formulas more readable. So let's start out, and the scenario I'm going to use is that I want to use the built-in payment function to help me figure out what my payments will be on a car loan. So I'm going to use column A to make my spreadsheet readable by giving labels that say what I'm putting in each row. So in the first row, I'm going to put the principal on my loan. In the next row, I'm going to put the annual interest rate. In the next row, I'm going to put the uh, number of months. So notice there's a discrepancy, annual interest rate, number of months. We'll have to deal with that. And then um, that's the, what I need to figure out what my monthly payment will be. Okay, so just as an example here, I'm going to use... Uh, Oh, let's say 25000 for the car and an annual interest rate of, let's say it's 4.5% and the number of months, let's say it's a four-year loan, 48 months, and this is going to be the monthly payment. But I, I want to give names to these so I can use them in my formula. So this one, I'm going to name cell B1 principal. Now, the formula would work just fine with B1 in it, but I just want to show you how to do this. Be sure to push enter. Now, notice the difference. This is the name for this cell. It's not what I wrote in column A. It's not the contents of the cell. It's the name of the cell. Same thing here. This one's currently named B2, but I'm going to give it another name as rate Okay, and the same thing here, this B3, I'm going to name it months. All right. Now, I want to use the payment function, but suppose I didn't remember that. Well, what I can do is go over to the formulas tab, and it shows me the different categories of functions. Now, if you're using a Mac, the categories are given in a different format. There's a little button you have to push to open it up, but it's basically the same idea. So this is a financial function, um, but before we do that, let's get started by putting an equal sign here. And it's showing me, actually, the payment function because I've used that recently. But just to show you, let's go ahead into the financials, and I'll scroll down. Here's payment. And now I have a nice little template I can use to fill in my values. So for the rate, it's telling me the interest rate per period of the loan. Now remember, I put the annual interest rate, so I call my cell rate, and it's going to be rate divided by 12. And over here, it's actually showing me the value that that comes out to be. Okay. The number of periods, I call that months. And you see the 48 here. Uh, the present value, that's the same as the principal. So I'm going to put the principal. Okay. And that looks good. Let's push OK. And here's my formula, uh, $570.09. Okay, now... You can play around with this a little bit. Suppose you wanted to see what your monthly payment is if you paid over 60 months, a five-year loan instead of a four-year loan. $466. Okay, what if I did a three-year loan? Um, 36. Well, that's the bigger payment. Now, suppose I said, but yeah, but instead of borrowing from the car dealer, my credit union will give me a 3% rate, let's say. It's a really nice credit union. Let's see what that does. Didn't bring it down by all that much, did it? What if I did 48? Okay, and you can keep playing around like this. 
you can multiply this one by this one to see what your total is that you're paying to compare the amount of interest and so on. Um, so this is actually a handy function to use and this shows you how to go about writing your formula and again uh, by giving names I got a formula that's very readable.